For two years, morning and evening, I would close my eyes and lean my head against her furry side. I'd listen to the rhythmic splish splash of the pure white milk hitting the bottom of the pail and smile at the grumble of her rumen and the eating grain groan of pleasure she exhibited at each milking. She was my Ruthie, the first goat I ever milked, our dear sweet Ruthie. In fact, we picked her up in Washington, a whole state away. She and Kira enjoyed a night of camping with us as we made our way home. I milked her in the campground and then we finished the final trek home. She was so sweet and gentle and, and such an easy milker. And she didn't complain when young little pudgy hands... <laughs> and she didn't complain when young little pudgy hands tried so hard to glean just one drop of milk. As we watched her give birth to her last kid, Faith, I had no idea that that wonderful memory would soon turn so very wrong as she struggled and died after giving birth to her next kid. She had never had any problems kidding and we were right there helping her. We knew we had a problem when my husband couldn't pull the next baby. It was evident there was a problem and we immediately called our vet. And this is why I will never go into another kidding season without a plan, an emergency plan. It is so hard to make decisions during times of stress and fear. At the time, my emergency plan was call the vet. But I realized now that I needed a more detailed and specific plan. I believe that this idea of having a plan for emergency pertains to any animal, small or large. What will you do if your dog gets run over or your cat comes home with obvious internal injuries? Your cow has ketosis after birth or your chicken has a prolapsed vent? Maybe your pygmy weathered goat gets kicked by a horse and breaks a, a back leg. Or your horse somehow manages to rip the entirety of their hoof off of their leg. Or your goat is struggling and needs a cesarean, as Ruthie needed. These are all precarious health conditions that have happened and do happen. In fact, the last three examples are injuries that have happened to animals on our property. And in two of those examples, we regret our decision. These incidents and accidents are shocking, unexpected, and con can cause life to go into a whirl of activity and then possibly grief. What can you do as an animal owner and lover to be as prepared as possible when an animal health disaster strikes? Like hundreds of others already have access to, you need to download and print out my emergency plan checklist and worksheets that are in my GOAT management binder. You can find the link to get those printouts below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you can be notified when more detailed, helpful, and inspiring ideas on a life of heritage are released. So, you need to have an emergency plan for your animals in place. And these are the things that you need to think about. First, you need to know your decision beforehand. Know in your heart and have it agreed on within the family, including the kids, what decision will be made if a life or death situation is at stake? Vet bills can add up quicker than you can say pay. At what point will you need to say enough is enough? Will you be willing, no matter what, to see it through to the end? How priceless is your animal, really? For instance, I know now that if I ever have a goat that is struggling at birth and is and pulling is not helping or there are obvious issues, we will immediately call the vet. But now, my decision process doesn't stop there. If the vet struggles to pull, I will ask for a cesarean. 
The pulling our previous vet had to do to get the second kid out of Ruthie mangled and mutilated her, probably also ripping her uterus. Those memories are so very hard to erase and the guilt and grief are so hard to overcome. You also need to talk to your vet. We know that a vet's job is to help us keep our animals healthy and also to help in emergencies. And most vets are very willing to work with small animals like dogs and cats. But when I was hauling a small animal, my pygmy goat with a broken back leg in the back of my vehicle, to find out I had to drive to several vets. I know that they all would have been quite capable to put a cast on my goat, but they weren't willing to. And some vets are also more willing to take risks and try different treatments. Some vets aren't familiar with some animals, like goats for instance. Talking to your vet will give both of you an idea of what is and can be expected. Your emergency plan needs to have your vet's phone number and possibly even a cell phone number written down and in your contacts list on your phone. You also need to have prepared an emergency kit. Putting together a set of supplies is so important. In my experience, emergencies have a very high probability of happening on the weekends or in the dark when necessary items are not available for purchase. I put together an emergency kit that fits nicely into an abandoned tackle box. When the emergency does happen, you need a quick emergency response. After you know what your decision is, you need a plan to carry it out. If the time comes, and I, and I truly hope for your sake that it doesn't, you need to be able to act quickly. Whether you are a writer or a thinker, it, it doesn't matter. Think it out, write it out, act it out, whatever it takes. But know your plan so that when the time comes, you won't have to feel out of control and fearful in your decisions. You have a plan. You know what to do. Be ready to do it. And lastly, pray. I believe in the power of prayer. And maybe you do too? That's a lot of thought to all the bad things that can happen, isn't it? There are a lot of bad things that can happen and, and sometimes they just do and it's not fair. But having an emergency plan for your animals will give you confidence and will help ease that little bit of fear that comes with owning animals. And when something unexpected does happen, you will know that you did what you could. You were prepared, ready, and took action without any regrets. And that is all we can ever do. Don't forget to take advantage of the resources linked below where you can print out an emergency plan and get it filled out and ready to go. Ruthie's last kid, Faith, is now full grown and has two kids hopping around at her feet. Ruthie's legacy lives on and now I lay my head against Faith's side as I milk her each morning and night. <laughs>